Well, I guess we're back, and that was, that? was a lot of fun. That was great. We had we had a blast doing that. Yes. Um, first thing I want to show you folks is some of the basic tools, really, that you use for making uh, a physical template. Now, there are other ways to template out there, and we do plan on talking about Why did you say physical template? Uh, because what other templates are there? E-templates. E-templates. E, and E consists of digital like, photography. Right, or exactly. laser. Yes. Or... Laser digital photography, basically. Or like we used to just go to the job and say, oh, this looks good. Then we'd go back and we'd make a top, right? So, <laughs> Some of them look like that. But, but, but actually, really, even when you do an e-template or a laser template, it's still there are machines that generate a physical template. Right. If that's what you want to use in your shop. Or if you have a, uh, um, a CNC, it can be downloaded directly into your CAD program and it can produce the tops from that. Right. But a physical template can be produced from digital photography or laser, that machinery is a bit expensive, um, unless you know somebody that's in the... Uh, yeah, uh, this would be the average for a small shop. Typically. Uh, and typically, or, most small shops do yeah, that. Or a homeowner uh, doing his own countertops, what have you. Certainly. There's a lot more of that going on. I know a lot of our viewers are homeowners. We've been having more and more call the office um, to talk about how they can do their own tops and what have you. Okay. One thing I wanted to mention, you know, I know you went over the toolkit, um, which is really a cool idea. Um, everything is all right there when you need to just pick it up and run. One thing I wanted that to... That really is an advanced idea. What? This is? Yes, it is. I wonder who thought of that. I don't know, but it's very advanced. Probably yeah. beyond its time. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> Ken thought of this idea, guys. This is what he wanted to put together. So we put together this little installation kit for you. But anyway, this, is, uh, this really you didn't go over because no. I don't really think you had one of these. I uh, did not, correct. This is called a center point tape, and it's really kind of cool. Uh, you're not going to be able to really see it here, but um, on the tape, on one side you actually have the dimension and on the other side tells you what the center point is for that dimension. And the way that works is really simple. Simple. Simply. If you take simply. 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 <laughs> if you take from 1 to 22, right? This side being a standard temp uh, or a standard um, measure. Tape measure. That's yes. the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Regular numbers. Tape, tape, uh, tape measure. Right. It actually will tell you if you go down here and look to where 22 is here. Mm -hmm. You have 22 here. When you find 22 here, that's the center. Right. And that works for anything. If you went to 25 here, all you do is look for 25 here, and that's the center. And a lot of times it's a real pain in the neck to try to figure an exact center, uh, you know, for an odd dimension or something. Mm -hmm. But with this, you're just, like if you had 25 and 7 sixteenths, you come to 25 and 7 sixteenths, and you're exactly dead center. Which right. is especially nice if you're trying to find like a sink center. Uh, on the template, especially. cooktops, what have you. So this is really kind of cool. Uh, this kit is, you know, I, I don't want to say it's expensive. It's, it's probably no more expensive than if you bought everything individually. Uh, but it's nice to have it all in a box. I mean, some guys will throw it in a bag or whatever. One but of the things I really didn't spend much time on the other night, and it really is cool, are these Bessie knives. Right. These things are just sharp to have. I mean, they're, they're, they look cool <laughs> they on really your belt sharp anyway. <laughs> Uh, but it's great because it just works off of a standard razor knife blade, right? Which and it's that easy to change mm -hmm. um, and to reload, which is great. Now there's some inexpensive ones you can get at the big box stores, but I don't think they have the next feature that you're going to show us, and that's for storing the blades. Correct. Which is really nice to have a blade handy all the time. It is. That's. I mean, that's a big thing because at the worst time, your blade is going to be dull. So and and it is a lock back, so it's not going to come around and cut your fingers off, which this blade always will because it's always right. sharp. Um, nice, a nice place to put your thumb to press down, which I don't think I've seen this on any other. And I've looked around at quite a few knives, and they don't have that nice, large, soft pad. Right. So that is a, a great tool, and that's included in this this kit also. All right. So let's take a look at the template that we actually well, first made. Well, one of the thing I want to talk about, and I really didn't get much chance to talk about it the other night, is. It really is important to have a good metal straight edge. Uh, the reason why I had this, and when, and when I had my own business, we use these all the time. It's, it's a six-foot aluminum ruler, really, a straight right. edge. Right. The, great thing, the great thing about it is, is almost every manufacturer that I'm aware of, they require the countertops or the cabinetry to be in plane, not level. They're not concerned whether the cabinets exactly. are level and plumb. The manufacturer, for warranty purposes, is only concerned that the cabinets are in a single geometric plane. 
the deviation they accept is one eighth of an inch over six okay. foot, which is why we <clears throat> use a six foot. So a single edge. plane, you're talking about just a flat surface, mm -hmm. one eighth up or down in a bow. One eighth, actually a sixteenth up or down comprises one eighth of an inch. Oh, okay. So, so it's, your center okay. line, you can go up deviation. a sixteenth, okay. down a sixteenth. That's right. one eighth. Total but if deviation. the cabinets were crooked, it wouldn't make any difference no, as the long as they're can flat. Be installed like this, okay, great, or like this. It could be rolled this way. It can roll whatever. When you think of a geometric plane rolling, it could be any any angle. But that hopefully it's matter. flat. Just flat is okay. all that any manufacturer Great. is looking for. <clears throat> because so. as you all know, that when you, if you fabricate, same thing with fabrication with our stands. If you fabricate in a bow, that's a problem. You're going to have the same problem if you have a bow in the countertop and you fabricate a counter that's flat. It's going to want to bow into that. That, uh, and solid surface. surface would at least forgive you to a degree. If we're right. talking stone or engineered stone, oh, when that you would force break. it to flex, yeah. it's going to snap and break, and that's right. going to be the end of the top. So this is a, a really a must for whether you do physical templates or not. Um, right. This is something that you should really use to check your tops over. And we used to make sure that our installation crews ran one of these over the cabinets before they ever put in a top two just to double check because we didn't want the warranty headaches. So okay. a great tool to get. Very good. But now I know you wanted to talk about the uh, templating material. That's going to fall over. Oh, but it'll make a lot of noise. Here, why don't we just set it over here? Yeah, we'll get it right in the crack. Okay. All right, the templating material. Um, yeah, before we get into the templates that we made, <clears throat> this is how the material actually comes. What's nice about it is if you're buying it, uh, these are packed 15 pieces in a box, and they're actually scored... Uh, on the, uh, in three pieces, scored in two places, so you get three pieces. Or three, or three sections. Three sections. It's 28 inches wide by 120 inches long, mm -hmm. so it's really perfect for countertop. Now, this can be used, as you saw, in a strip method. It can be used in a solid method or a solid method with the strips. If you order this in quantities of 100 or more, it comes unscored. But to be able to UPS it, it comes scored, and the dimensions don't change whether it's scored or not. So, uh, great material. You can see through it, which is really handy. See? So, you, you, want, you wouldn't want to get dressed behind this? No. Okay. No. <laughs> not in my house, anyway. Um, it's waterproof, which, if you recall, when we left to do the, yes, uh, from, the from the field uh, right. measure, it started raining, and we had the templates in the back of the truck. Had that been cardboard, it would have been a problem, but with mm -hmm. this, it makes no difference at all. So if you're working with stone or anything that you have to use with water, this is a great product. It's relatively inexpensive. It's reusable, and I, I just think it's the greatest thing out. It's very similar to Coreplast, and I believe that Coreplast is a little bit less expensive than this is, but the ability to see through it is kind of nice, to be able to see um, dividers, a trouble spot or whatever without having to get up underneath the counter. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you'll just notice things through here that like, oh, I got to mark that divider because my sink's going to overhang or something. Mm -hmm. So, great material. Correct. So, yeah, good stuff. And we, we did uh, template two different ways. Um, one of them, which you saw this uh, live on the set, and what's nice is you can see just by taking and laying it right <coughs> over, there's our vanity top. Um, very simple, uh, very simple template, easy to do. And the great thing about this is when you get it back in your shop, once again, the plastic is very stable. It'll take, just like this did, this laid right back out. This would be ready immediately to fabricate. So now your dimension where on the video we marked it there, put mm -hmm. the tape end in, and then this is your 70 inches. So all you would have to do is make sure that this were opened or closed to that 70 inches just, just to double check sure it. Just make sure that it's, it stayed pretty much fine. One thing that should be pointed out is remember this is a plastic for you guys who are up north um, I, I'm from New England uh, if you were in um, uh, let's say Michigan or right. or, or Wisconsin um, then you would want to pay attention to making sure that if you had kept this in your truck and it was very cold that you when you brought it into the house let it come to temperature because it is a plastic and it will explain, expand some right um, we have uh, one guy in the chat room Blair right now and he says that he uses and prefers the strip method. So this would actually be how he would do this. And all we did was, um, Blair, we just took a, a full sheet of material and right. we just ripped it down into strips. Now, it is possible to reuse the strips, 
but not as easy as it is to reuse the full yeah, sheet and just put a strip Yeah, at some point you it. have to decide how much is it worth the labor to actually take them apart, clean them all up, and get them ready mm -hmm. to use again. Whereas the benefit <clears> to the full sheet method is you can write all over it, wash mm -hmm. all the writing off. Well, what's nice is you can take that strip off the back. Yeah, that's, that's all really it all that makes scribe. it, exactly, that's what makes it a proprietary template to that mm -hmm. countertop. So, uh, um, but this is... But uh, I still prefer, you know, I prefer this just because of handling purposes. Um, again, that seems flimsy to me. Um, this is a little bit, it's stiffer. And I just think I, I would much rather work with something like this than the strip method. But guys do both. There's definitely a lot more body here. As you can see, this is compared to the other. Right. More than likely just being unfolded that this will immediately just find its, its proper <clears throat> position. Let's see, we have the notes here on the job. This is the customer, the um, color of the material, the bull nose, one inch bull nose, three inch cove splash, three, oh, three inch high, okay. Mm -hmm. Radius is on the corner. Um, so you can mark it all up and just go right at it. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory when it gets back to the shop. And that's, and once again, to point out something that's really great is at the end of this job, when this is all done, if we took a little bit of denatured alcohol, mm -hmm. just squirted it under here, squirted it under there, we could take all this hot melt that's going to pop right off. We could take and we could get all of our, our handwriting off of here, and we could just take and reuse these sheets again. We have a uh, question from Chris from Jacksonville. If there was a lot of variation in the back wall, would you cut the back strip to fit rather than just pressing it in? Yes, you if could. It were, if it were really radical. Right. Because there's only so much flex you're going to get out of that, that piece of strip. Right. And there are some walls I've seen, uh, and, and I'm sure it's been your case too in, in, in the past, as much as it amazes me, I've seen walls that have deviated up to three quarters of an inch. And you're wondering oh, yes. what the contractor was thinking. In a case like that, that is so radical that... Chris, you're right. You're going to have to cut the strip to get it to go back to that full point. And, and then you're going to have to use a scribe strip as well. Correct. Okay. So that is an excellent point. Very good. Okay. So, so uh, what else do we have on templating? Um, <clears throat> I think that's about it for templating, isn't it? And you can just toss it off on the glories side. Of glories of templates. Yep. Um, uh, Blair actually <clears throat> um, says, right now I'm using a cardboard drywall shim method. It probably is material. not as stable as plastic. Um, cardboard drywall shim, shim material. Cardboard, cardboard drywall shim. Material. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure. Oh, um, well, no, I'm not sure, so I'm not going to say. Okay. I, I, I well, maybe he'll, maybe he'll yeah. tell us what it is. Maybe he can come up with a little bit more information for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say that uh, in our shop, we used a lot of cardboard, mm -hmm. um, and we had a lot of shops that used Luon. Cardboard we thought was a really good material. It was back 20 years ago. It was, a, right. it was a big deal coming up with a real consistent method. Uh, once again, there are now methods that have really accelerated past that point. And once again, if you're making a physical template, you really do, I think, want to make the effort to get something um, like the uh, Templast or Chloroplast, something that is a plastic, right. that is reusable, right. that is more stable. It's going to take more punishment. Uh, so it's going to end up making your job come out a whole lot better. And it's, it's more expensive <clears throat> up front, but I can remember, you know, buying the cardboard was not necessarily cheap. And when you look at the fact that you can reuse this once again, and that has to really be driven home. From a, from a shop <clears throat> owner's perspective, if you bought a skid of 100 sheets of this, you definitely uh, are not going to replace right. that anytime within, I'd say, a <clears throat> year or two. Let me uh, mention one thing, too, that we hadn't even talked about. One of the advantages that I saw when we took this material on was that the cost of the sheet is inexpensive enough that if you use a full-size template, when you go and put the countertop back on the job, if it is a construction site, you can actually take the template, tape it right down on top of the countertop, and it's a protective material that is very durable. I mean, tools get stacked on it, tools get dropped on it, things like that. So if you look at the cost of a piece of this material, and I don't know exactly what it is, but it's not expensive. If that piece of material taped to your countertop can stop you from having to come back to take care of a scratch or finish it, it's well worth leaving it on the job site, build it into the price of the job, and it's just gone. That's all. That's actually an excellent point because when you think about it, we do sell a lot of 
um, protective film. Right. Um, but it's not going to stop. It's a, not going to stop that kind of right. That kind of damage. Right. And the great thing about this is because of its durability, being that it is a corrugated item, and it's not just the the heavy mill thickness of the material, but the corrugation. It's going to take quite a punishment before it's going to let anything happen to the countertop. For you guys who do. Uh, uh, especially track builder work, right? Because they're brutal. They're not oh, going to yeah. pay you to come back. Right. They're going to expect you to come back. So it's not like a typical homeowner that may say, "Well, you oh, know, you're not going to get this. paid unless the homeowner accepts that countertop, regardless of whose problem it is. Mm -hmm. It's your problem if there's a scratch in it. If you can go after the guy that scratched it, you know, have at it. But chances are you're not going to, and you're just going to go back and do it. But with a protective layer like this on the job, you know, even if it's 20 bucks. I mean, 25 bucks. I don't, I don't know what it is, but even if it is that much, it's, it's well worth. It's going to cost you that much just to drive back to the job. Get your guy into the Absolutely. Truck and turn the key. Blair says the cardboard strips um, uh, the, uh, that he uses are, are pre cut. They're about a sixteenth of an inch thick and they're found in drywall section of box stores, of the box stores. They come in three to four inches length. Three to four foot in length. Oh, three to four foot length. Okay, I've I not thought seen that it. was interesting because everything heard of in our system is marked inches that way. Yeah, I've never heard of anything. Uh, I've never heard of anybody shimming out drywall. No, I haven't. But you know what? <laughs> so that's kind of neat. Still, one thing I would point out, and I mean that is great because it's a simple item that you right. can probably buy, and I can understand why he's doing. Once again, though, it is a cardboard item. So right. I know, especially here in Florida, you can be going somewhere that can just. You know, start to rain right. any time. That's probably anywhere in the south in general. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, once again, the plastic is going to be totally unaffected by that. If you were up north and it started to snow, um, you know, that's not going to be affected. Uh, it's just, <clears throat> this is durable stuff. So it's something you really do want to take a look at because making a consistent template is extraordinarily critical to turning out a consistent job and yep. a great fitting job. Right. So that's really, really important. So once again, for you guys that make physical templates, um, really take a look at this. One of the things we can just briefly talk uh, about, just because we have a, a, just a couple minutes left before we go to our next break, is the e-templates. Um, there's really two main types of e-templates, and I've talked about them before. Now, e-template is a brand name of template, but you're talking about electronic templates it, in it, general. Correct. And, okay. and, and you're right, there's, a, th there's brand specific to that name, but I think it's also generic. Right. That an e-template is anything that is electronic. Um, the two most common forms of that are um, a type that uses a digital camera. So just your We should maybe get them on the show. It would be fun. It would be kind of neat just to come in and do a whole demo, get some countertops in and what have you. The, the thing we'll that, that is really fascinating about that technology is it actually came from NASA. So when people complain about, you know, why do we pump money into the space program, there's all kinds of things that come from that, not just Tang. But all kinds of stuff. Or, or therapeutic <laughs> beds or whatever they are. Well, why do they need therapeutic mm -hmm. beds in space? I don't know. I don't you know? know. Yeah. I don't They're know already why weightless they... to begin with. Yeah, that's right. But uh, 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 the, um, uh, what I wanted to get to, though, was that on the uh, digital photography, what is so cool about that is you actually take and you have little geometric dots mm -hmm. that you put all in, on all your... your uh, either depressions, changes in planes, and right. stuff like that. And you end up, and you take a, a photograph of it with your camera, but the, the, your computer program actually does spatial relationship positioning. <laughs> you know, I, I tell you, I, I gotta tell you. the way it works. There's something about having a physical template in your hand. Makes you feel better, you know, when it? you walk off the job, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I think the e-templates and all that stuff are just great. But you got to have a certain faith <laughs> that, you know, I got it in my camera. It's all done. It's, it's going to come out just right. This is from the guy who lives <laughs> on a computer in his house. I so. know. Well, you know, it's, you know it, it's really weird, though. But to actually have a physical template in your hand when you walk off the job, I can't tell you how many times I've gone back to a template to just make sure. But with an e-template, there's really nothing there. You but, just make it. But that picture, it's, you, have that, yeah. you have that physical record. And, and the, a laser does pretty much the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you the points and the programs. And the key is really you've got to buy the programs. What hits you is these things are anywhere from seven to twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Yeah. So they are, they're expensive programs. And I guess maybe for a large shop that wants to hire somebody with no expertise like a homemaker, you can make it work that way. So it's something to look right. at. But also it's the guys that have salespeople out on the road in a, in a wide area, and all they have to do is take the template 
and email that file into Correct. the shop and they're fabricating it already. I mean, you could literally take a picture, email it in, and your countertops could be under construction or manufacture before you even come back as a salesman. Mm -hmm. So that's the big advantage to it, I think. So, a lot of cool stuff out there. There really is. Uh, Blair says he wants to let us know that he's in Phoenix and he doesn't rain there very much, um, but he does have to worry about it drying up and blowing away. So, <laughs> so right. But the plastic is still going to work there because it's not going to dry up. But anyway, I know that uh, the twisting arms, they want to go to break, so... After break, we're going to talk about some cool things. Uh, these weren't on the schedule tonight, but we knew we were going to run a little early, so we'll talk about these after break. We'll see you.